it's easy to get lost in Rafik Anadol's surreal installations. But dig a little deeper, and you realize his work is made up of millions of tiny pieces, and that every single little point represents a piece of data that he's fed through a neural network to show us his vision of our future. I was always like trying to like n speculate this idea of can data become a pigment. At the end, the data is a truly numbers that has no kind of any skin or skeleton. But what I'm trying to as an artist is find the algorithm that can narrate the moment of data, kind of like make that invisible moment visible. Enormous data sets inspire most of Anadol's art, and he uses machine intelligence and algorithms to create visualizations what he calls data sculptures, like this piece called Machine Hallucinations. He started by finding 113 million images of New York online. And let the machine learn from this entire corpus of data. And then we also find a way to erase the humans from this data and only focus on the buildings, nature, and environments that is a collective memory of New York. Once all of the images of people were removed, Anadol was left with 10 million pictures of New York. He fed them through a machine learning algorithm that generates visual associations as it learns. For example, when it sees multiple photos of the Statue of Liberty taken from slightly different angles, the algorithm interpolates information to help it create a moving, shifting image that represents the entire life cycle of the structure. Machine looks at this information like a human being, but it's kind of more like a collective memories than a personal memories, because a building in New York can be explored by thousands of perspectives from multiple angles from a different time of the year. It's more like an honest memory for a machine because it feels more totalitarian and like feels everything and everyone than just one person. Anadol covered the walls and the floor of a boiler room in a building in Lower Manhattan with this machine-interpreted dynamic landscape. If you ask him, he'll tell you that the machine is dreaming. When a machine learns from outputs and memories like this, it can create an alternative reality. It look at the patterns of the trees, the buildings, the nature, the people, every single thing hidden inside this image corpus. Seeing a machine giving a context of data and creating an hallucinative outputs was something like really inspiring. Anadol created this piece to celebrate the centennial of the LA Philharmonic, using half a million images, thousands of audio recordings, and hundreds of videos from the orchestra's archives. He fed all that into a series of algorithms that turned it into these extraordinary projected images. By using machine learning algorithms, the entire archive of LA Philharmonic becomes a shape of three-dimensional outputs. We were able to see all these data points becoming together or disappearing and making kind of a new sculptures. And the building itself, Frank Gehry's Walt Disney Concert Hall, became part of the sculpture too. I was always like looking for inspiring buildings and Frank Gehry became my hero. And I rent a car, went to downtown, it was 2 a.m., the building's light was off, like there was nothing around it. And that night I was really struck by an idea like, what will happen if this building can remember, like can it dream? So he projected the machine-interpreted archives onto a smaller model of the Walt Disney Concert Hall. Once he settled on something he liked, he projected it onto the bigger, real-life building. What we are doing is another typical painting, another typical sculpture, but more like an experience from a near future. And when they come together with sound, data, mission intelligence, and light, and architecture, they have a new meaning, a new kind of symbiotic con connections. I think I was really hooked up by the idea of a building can become an interface. It can be a boring advertising, but it can be a beautiful interface. The ideation of a human instinct become a part of a machine is really strike me, like emotionally. Anadol and his team used 42 large-scale projectors with an astonishing 50K video resolution to create a dramatic display in downtown LA every night for 10 days, a nod to one of his favorite movies. I was eight years old when I watched the movie Blade Runner. I was extremely inspired by the movie. In downtown Los Angeles, a building suddenly becomes alive. And it has this cognitive capacity of remembering, and it has a capacity of dreaming. So this was all like very high level science fiction narratives. And the futuristic dystopian film's exploration of more complex themes echo Anadol's interest in the relationship between humans and technology. You think I'm a replicant, don't you? When Deckard and Rachel like contemplates each other and has a dialogue where Deckard defines Rachel as a replicant. It was a very interesting moment where a human defines another machine that 
is kind of this defining what is real or what is not. That, that kind of human consciousness and mission consciousness were having its dialogue moment. That was truly inspiring. You remember the spider that lived in a bush outside your window? The egg hatched. Those aren't your memories, they're somebody else's. I think in humanity, we have very certain um, findings that transform who we are. When we found the fire, we cook with it, we create communities. With the same technology, we kill each other and destroy. And clearly, AI is one of the discovery in humanity that has a potential to make communities or destroy each other. Anadol finds data for his machine intelligence collaborations everywhere. And when he learned that wind data is continuously being collected at the Boston airport, he knew he'd found a gold mine. He turned it all into this project called Winds of Boston. I was always inspired by nature as an inspiration from the, like, the wind itself, the water, the, the nature, like a core natural like aspect of motion theory in life in general. And I thought it can be an incredible opportunity to like, use wind as a, like a data and as a pigment. So we first located our data source from the airport, Logan Airport. The wind is extremely important for the flight networks. So we, we took a one year long wind data of Boston. And this data consists of the gust, speed and direction and the temperature of the weather. Anadol fed all this wind data into a series of algorithms. Then he built custom 13-foot-tall LED screens to display the visualized data. And I thought that algorithms can be an incredible way of visualizing this invisible pattern of wind and transform them into a poetic like motion. Because it's very inspiring that the machine can find something interesting that I didn't even think about it. And I, and I found that the true collaboration starts happen there. And sometimes machine gives opportunities that I didn't think about it. And I do believe that is really something that is inspiring for humanity that will most likely bring some new kind of imagination methods that is not discovered yet. The inspiration for this project called Melting Memories came from a personal place. I went to Istanbul, my uh, hometown, and my uncle just couldn't remember where I am coming from. And apparently it was his first stage of Alzheimer. When this disease happens, we literally melt our memories. Our brain tissue disappears. But I also like, was very curious about scientifically, honestly, what memory means. Like, where do they come from? What is the cognitive like representation of a memory? And the images on these 20-foot tall LED screens represent the real data behind that process. And these moments are really trying to give a sense of a tangible feeling of a memory. I know that we are not there as technology that truly transcripts a memory, but it at least gives a glimpse of an abstract language of a memory. That's one of those feelings that is hidden in those algorithmic exploration of data. Anadol partnered with scientists at a neuroscience lab. They asked subjects to concentrate on childhood memories and recorded all their brain pulses using an EEG. The data itself is literally pulsing in a four milliseconds of a human brain activity in the two locations of brain, from hippocampus to frontal left lobe. And the algorithm symbolizes the moment of remembering, and it is how poetic moment of this firing location in two locations of the brain. Anadol and his team created custom software that transformed all of that brain data into an artistic interpretation of the neurons firing, another example of how we use this technology to describe life. I never stop thinking about data as a, as a, as a mean of like material. Sometimes it can be a wind data, it can be a Wi-Fi Bluetooth signal, it can be a machine intelligent machine decisions, it can be a CPU data, GPU data. It's honestly anything that machine needs to understand life can become a material for this imagination. One problem we have to solve today is a visual discontinuity problem. Inadal has built a team with expertise in different fields to help him fulfill his vision. AI experts, computer scientists, architects, and designers. And they're working out a new workflow for a data-driven public art project set for Portland. For this one, Anadol is letting hundreds of thousands of images of Portland inform both the projections and the structure they'll be projected on. The team is using a 3D printer to build this structure, one panel at a time. It will ultimately be a 21-foot tall sculpture. I found that we were stuck in this just virtual world. I found that we are in the screens, 2D flat world of like imagination. I was really looking forward how we can take this mission consciousness out of the screen and bring it to the 3D world. Whatever is in store for the future of Anadol's work, 
Data and machine learning will be the foundation. It's very clear that machines can really capture our data. Machines can capture our decisions, our memories, but it's not clear what will happen to them. And I think also, clearly, the data we leave behind is the memories of humanity. My obsession with this relationship is what else we can do with that.